Hello, everybody. I want to make a quick uh, video commentary um, about, well, basically, it's about British overseas territories and um, what they call bots. I hope, I think this is a little bit too high there. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to start talking. And, and what what is really behind the scenes going on uh, when we talk about British overseas territories or American overseas territories or any kind of um, new version of what used to be known as colonies or non-self-governing uh, territories um, in the United Nations. When it comes, when it regards uh, other countries claiming that land, um, okay, today as maybe not many people see it this way, but we can all relate to a, a recent um, social, civil, uh, passionate movement since the 80s or before, since the 70s or since the end of the 70s, 80s. Uh, about um, individualism and uh, the rights to do with my life as I please, and the whole notion of neoliberalism, neoliberalism, neo neoliberalism, yeah, neoliberalism, and uh, the whole cultural movement that comes along with um, gender ideology, and I'm, you know, and it's it's. It's, it's been very popular with politicians, you know, who, and, and even uh, on the internet, social networks, they love to say, you have the power, you have the choice. It's easy to fire people up uh, when you tell them that they're empowered in some degree uh, when it comes to uh, civil values, um, political ideology, uh, you know, people... Uh, eat up, you know, they drink up uh, anything that's an idea of uh, personal freedom and rights, you know, rights in society. It's a very big, um, I'm about to start talking like Trump. <laughs> it's very big. <laughs> it's very big these days. Um, and in any case, why am I mentioning this? Before I, I explain how that plays into what I'm going to talk about, I need to um, make uh, a, a small explanation for people to understand the paradigm or the paradox that is a relationship between government and their people. You know, we talk a lot about people have a say, it's, it's our right, we don't want this, we don't want that in our government or, or, or for our government to do this or that and we are very uh, boisterous about in our belief that um, this has uh, this this uh, rights of uh, of the individual and de democracy and human rights uh, um, power that has been culturally in uh, installed in our in our popular um, social or political intelligence in society. Um, and so we don't, we sort of have, it seems that we have lost sight of how the mechanism between government and its people work. I mean, we have government that has become very detached and very over empowered and secretive and corrupt um, in their distance, in their scale, in their things that they're able to control and keep in some kind of underworld that is completely out of, uh, away from the public perception and um, that barely gets scratched a little bit, the surface of when independent uh, journalists kind of reveal things and it was a different point with a different analysis, a different perspective. And then all of a sudden we realize what is, you know, we, we ask ourselves, what is going on, you know? But um, 
we can't believe some things that are so audaciously uh, flying in the face of, 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 of things that we upheld not that long ago, uh, like the rights of countries to govern themselves. Um, it was sacred, and now we see this whole construction that the United States is easily was able to rally up 50 countries against Venezuela, against Venezuela or against Bolivia, and, and we're just like sheep looking at it all happen, be completely the opposite of what we, we were raised uh, to believe in, and yet our very own governments are doing, are going against everything that they have taught us as children, right? Um, and nobody can do anything. Well, what is going on? What, what is the, this paradigm and paradox that I'm talking about? Um, speaking in, in, a, in a capacity of um, an eternal capacity, anthropological capacity, human civilization, and the way human beings have always created government. You know, we gather, we, we decide that we want to have a, 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 an authority, a government, an administrative body that runs this valley, this group of people, you know, that, that uh, have got and we want to have our country and we want to have our political philosophy uh, run things and um, as a people we bestow this administrative body and all of the systems uh, that you know that we design to govern and administrate the land with power we bestow and endow that structure with body with a power over ourselves we do that because we can't always be arguing about how to do things so we want to establish ways and means to govern the land and the people and establish law and establish quick uh, coordinated organization when we need to uh, in emergencies or or to defend ourselves in, 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 in a would-be war what have you so we give this apparatus, power, and authority. And then we realize, wait a second, we don't want to be left powerless and not be able to control this Frankenstein that we have made to uh, run our lives. So we design into it ways of steering it, of changing it, of voting, uh, you know, is one way, one, one um, means through which to govern, direct, and steer government, change it. Uh, there ought to be many more because it is our creation, but let's not get into that. Um, and so when um, people have to argue um, a matter of the land's sovereignty before another country, it is um, it is not at the same level as government. It doesn't it is not government. The people are not government. They have given government their power and they can steer and handle and direct and influence and request from government. Uh, but they, 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 are, they don't have the authority over government that government has itself on itself and its people. Um, so there's, you know, there's an order there that we have created ourselves. And so when it comes to a territorial sovereignty dispute between two governments, for example, it is the two governments that have to work it out. It can't be either one of the people telling either their government or the other government what to do uh, what is right, what is wrong, when to shut up, uh, you know, it's not how it works. They would have to request to their own government to please deal with that government that is, um, um, you know, uh, claiming the sovereignty of the land they live on. Uh, they, if, if, or if they, they want to, they can break free of that government and say, you're not, you're not ruling us anymore. You're no longer our government. We're going to deal with this situation ourselves. In the case of the Falkland Islands or the Malvinas Islands, um, that is what's happening. Um, now, what is interesting is that the Malvinas Islands 
were under Spanish administration or claimed by England. England says it got there first. It tried settling and the Spanish went to war with them and they kicked them out and they came back and blah, 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 blah. Generally speaking, until the Argentinians arrived, it was majoritively considered Spanish realm. And the English have a whole bunch of reasons why, you know, they said we got there before, you know, this or that. And, but in reality, nobody really consolidated their plans on the Malvinas or the Falklands. It was always a colonial choice, an outpost choice for these big colonial empires. Well, when Argentina started getting formed, they said, well, what's going on? You know, this was Spain, and Spain was building a little church and doing their thing, and the English left, and, you know, English people were in the area sailing, whaling, catching seals, and the queen, the king still said, you know, that's one of our, you know, in the, f in the face of the Spanish, uh, insisted that it was still their territory, even though they abandoned their port and what have you. Uh, but the Argentines went, well, you know, it doesn't look like they're really serious about anything. We're forming right across the shores from these islands. We're Spanish. We're going to continue. And, you know, their harbors were used. Their, the administrative seat, as far as the Spanish were concerned, was in Buenos Aires since 1776. So the Argentines simply saw it sensible and logical that they would and so incorporate into their forming nation these islands. Well, when the English saw that the Spanish left and were not interested in the islands anymore and they were losing the, the South American nations, um, they said, well, we better grab it now because the Argentinians, they're having a hard time. You know, the Americans came and they got upset because the Argentinians want, wanted to install uh, um, uh, whaling and sealing laws, administrative laws, and so they they uh, sort of penalized and seized some American ships. Some they considered unlawfully uh, whaling on the islands, and so the the Americans were appall appalled, and they sent somebody back and blasted the Argentine settlement uh, to Kingdom Come. And so the British said, "Hey, you know." And then they told the British about it, and the British said, "Well, we better go back and grab it now, because if we don't grab it now, the Argentinians are going to be left with it." So they did that. They went back. They um, they said, this has always been our territory, blah, 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 and they kicked out the Argentinians, and that's how the conflict started. The Argentinians could barely, you know, get their country going. They, they, um, they needed the good relationships with the English. They, get, they needed good relationships with the Americans. They needed to sort of start growing, and so the English took advantage of that. They, they didn't tell Buenos Aires. They didn't deal with Buenos Aires, who, who's the islands, whose administration the islands were under. Uh, they just went and removed the Argentinians, and so the Argentines went, oh God, it's just too much. It's too much to deal with, you know, and they, they tried diplomatically. They send their ambassador or president, later president, to London, and London said, you know, laughed at them because they can't, all they can do is ask, right? And that didn't, pretty much didn't change for the remaining, uh, the, the remaining history of the conflict until the brilliant junta decided to, uh, thought that the English would not fight back. Well, let's not talk about that because 1982, there's a whole thing about how did that war actually happen? I mean, the junta was not dumb enough to, to think that England would, oh, look, they took our islands. Oh, well, no. Um, they knew that if they sent soldiers and uh, to the English, it was always uh, a, a, a pushover sort of uh, threat. They didn't have to worry. They had NATO to count with. They, they're not. They're, they never thought that they, um, if they had to have the islands, there was a chance they could not have them. Um, they liked to save their dignity and say, "Oh, that was a close call," you know. You know, we almost didn't make it, but, you know, we know <laughs> that uh, America and England was together in, in having and recuperating these islands, and it doesn't make any sense. So there's a reason to believe the Junta was somehow, well, they were for several reasons, even without any kind of conspiratorial theory, 
uh, under the belief that maybe didn't really, wouldn't really react for some reason. And, but at the same time, I think they were incentivated somehow um, by someone at some point, something that had been lost in the personal inner relationships of these historical figures. In any case, what I'm trying to get at is that when in 1946, um, I think it was, that the United Nations created um, the Commission for Non-Self-Governing Territories and blah, blah, you know, when it was all about let's be good and righteous and no longer be colonial powers and, <laughs> you know. 1946, and there's still it's still going on. <laughs> it's still going on, you know. But anyways, uh, supposedly the the United Nations is this 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 wonderful front that the United States and America and the Western allies present to the world, saying we are the first righteous uh, world ideology for for the planet that will bring justice and fair equality and everything to everyone and so everybody's there at the united nations trying to work things out because they really believed that that they were being truly altruistic the creation of the united nations so in 1946 um, i believe yeah they created this you know to attend to the non-self-governing or ex-colonial territories of the planet and so what happens instead of Argentina seeing the creation of the United Nations and, go, and, and looking for where to bring its problem with Britain that they have since 1833, England immediately introduced this as a colonial issue in the uh, list of non-self-governing or uh, colonial territories and listed itself you know, <laughs> as the administrator or the would-be occupier, but we don't use those words, right? We call it the administrator of that uh, non-self-governing territory. And Argentina just went along with that, you know? They just went along with it. Um, and so now they're arguing, and Argentina goes there, and Alejandro Betts, rest in peace, God bless his soul, uh, did so much work, so diligent, and made these amazing presentations as an islander before the United Nations, and said, "No, you know, they don't even let us talk. We, you can't say anything in favor of Argentina if you live on the islands." And he said a whole bunch of stuff that um, really speaks to the reality of the situation that is going on on the islands regarding Argentina. And um, and you know these presentations and, and they always end up in some joint statement saying we you guys should resolve the conflict you should resolve the conflict don't change things you know don't try to advance in your pretensions and just try to resolve the conflict every year the same statement and the British go yeah really okay so they go and start drilling for oil in the ocean and building up the harbor in Stanley and bringing people commerce tourism and they have a plan, you know, they, they want to make these islands um, more present in their, in themselves, in their, in their, because they were characterized by something, by a lack of, a lack of um, a form, you know, they were really British territories, I mean, you know, sort of they supported themselves because they were only 2,000 people, and so they, they sheared sheep and they did a few things and, and they didn't, it wasn't really a complicated situation. And they knew about the Argentinian claim, but the Argentinians and Britain were friends. Even though the British tried to invade Argentina like three times in the past, uh, the Argentinians, and because they built so much and they did so much in Argentina, Argentinians grew up thinking that they're great and they should be their friends and we're kind of English and we're a little bit French and we're, you know, and so they never saw that Latin America really was sort of grabbed by England and America, you know, and they never always, in, always meddled with and messed with and always, you know, tripped here and tripped there so that they, 
so that they could control their resource development and exploit them and use them and have their systems, their financial systems run their economies and their industries. And, you know, they, they never saw themselves as uh, having been grabbed from the Spanish in a very subtle way. They, um, they lived the farce, the, the, the phony pretense that they're sovereign, individual, independent, wholehearted, integral nations like every other nation in the world. But when you look at Japan and Germany and many countries that were uh, messed, you know, messed up seriously by foreign invasion, by bombing, by wars, by even cultural um, invasion, you still see a strength of self and of knowing we're going to, we got to do something and a lack of inner divisions that Latin America uh, does not know. They get divided easily and immediately there's always a half in each country that wants to go with the Europeans, the French, not the, the, the English or the, not the French, but the, the Americans and, and, um, and this the schizophrenia that ills South American and Latin American countries comes from the colonial period. And when the British astutely grabbed the Falcons Malvinas dispute and defined it as such in the, in the, in the list of colonial and self governing territories in the United Nations, they really didn't understand what, how the British were handling and uh, planning long term how to maneuver this situation. Um, what happens is that today, now, this is the irony, that um, the same thing happens with Gibraltar. Britain uses this passion of, you know, this it's a political value, and I don't want to say that it's intentional, because all our politicians, people, everybody is like, uh, like drones, like clones, repeating the same thing. Uh, it's all about our right to determine our own destiny and our rights of self-determination and blah, that's what counts that trumps all is what you hear people write all the time they're the islanders wishes above everything you know and it's all part of this sort of formula that works beautifully for politicians because they can say i'm going to give you your power and all everybody's applauding that politician right um and, um, you know, as I described the, the paradox between people and government, it wouldn't really work that way, either in Gibraltar or in, in Malvinas, because there's a matter that has to do with these two governments in Britain, or Britain and Argentina. The islanders, as such, Come on, <laughs> let's not lie anymore. They were brought 10 years later after they kicked out the Argentinians because England wanted to fortify its presence. It wanted to fortify the territory they took from the Argentinians that they claim was always theirs, whatever, but they brought the islanders so as to avoid uh, dealing with this, uh, this, uh, at a political level with the Argentinian government and just making it about the people early on in 19, 1845 already uh, you know Israel does the same with, uh, with its settlers in, in Palestine it knows that you can later say but now we have people living there so you know what are you going to do about that you know that well what we're going to do about it is say, that's great, and people are the most important thing in the world. But it turns out that people made government to administrate the world and resolve problems amongst each other, each government. <laughs> resolve problems between governments. And so the people cannot have the same weight that the presence of a government does. It can say, um, we want our government to uh, take over Palestinian-occupied territory and turn it into Israel, 
But we can't, they can't say, because we are here, it should be Israel. They can't say in Malvinas, because we are here, it should be Falklands or it should be Britain. No, because that's not how we set up things. People set up government above them. Nonetheless, you hear speeches in the United Nations and you hear Britain talk about how the islanders are what matters and, you know, and everybody's going along with it. Everybody is just going along with it. It's unbelievable. And, and this formula of, of making a story on, on, on the news of, and that, you know, the Venezuelan people and we're doing it for the Venezuelan people and what we care most about is the well-being of the Venezuelan people. No, the real reasons that government is most interested in where its com the companies of its country are going to anchor in and exploit the resources of that country, all that doesn't get talked about. Right? We hear about it. They're educating us, independent journalists, and you know, they're, it's amazing what you, you hear. They're, it's not being kept secret, but the people in, in, in mass scale are unable to turn it around and start talking about the real story, the real situation. We're still uh, going along with these easy to be passionate about and embrace ideologies about I am important because I get to be this gender or that gender and I am important because what I say my government won't do on these islands and and we lost sense uh, because we've also lost a lot of respect because we've also lost a lot of influence in, in making power of our in our governments and so that uh, that connection, that explanation connection that would have the paradox or the paradigm of uh, a government empowered by its people easily, palpably understand, understood at the social level among everyday friends talking about the state of the world and all that has been diluted. And now we have recessed to talking about these ideologies as if we were all Greek philosophers, you know, and but nobody understands how our government is supposed to relate to us and what we can do as far as steering or directing our government. We talk about voting, we talk about things, but the the paradox in which we order and place government in its rightful place with respect and uh, in turn uh, and in reciprocity, our government respecting its people, all that has been terribly diluted this, this you know there's just so much information so much and so people are talking about are talking a lot of concept a lot of ideologies and as such we have become very much easier to influence we can be sensationalist and and make a story that is full of conceptual ideologies and values and principles and all of a sudden everybody will take that story and start saying, yeah, yeah, this is right, this is wrong, you know. Um, but how the world works is no longer being uh, tangibly understood in the arguments and discussions that people are having. Um, okay, anyways, so I just wanted to add this. I think it's very, I think it's a very compelling point that we should be talking about. We should actually be talking about how things really are and how things really happen and not definition, ideological, conceptual, moral, blah, 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 blah.